Welcome along to another Excel video. Thanks for coming by. This video is revisiting a concept that we have looked at before, but is adding a little twist to it. Now I know um, radar charts are possibly becoming like pie charts in which uh, people no longer like them anymore, but nevertheless there's an interest in their use and uh, if you do it right I think that they can be quite useful. So video number 30 was an uh, explanation of how to make a, a radar chart using a scaling system where every fitness test result was scaled somewhere between 0 and 100. Now the value of that is that it is the same scale and allows you to use it uh, together on a chart with a whole lot of other variables that may have different units. So um, I'm just going to scroll down here. Now here's a chart that was a part of my previous video. So this radar chart is an example of one that makes people not approve of their use. And the reason uh, this one is such a mess is that, in my opinion, there's far too many variables on there, and therefore it's not easy to distinguish what is actually happening. The value of this type of chart is that you can look at the shape of the uh, of the series and get some kind of decision about what the athlete's qualities are. This shape is just a mess, and therefore it's not particularly useful. So what I prefer is a much cleaner shape where you can look at uh, things a bit more simply. So the data for this is on a page called data and if you want a copy of this spreadsheet don't forget to uh, drop me an email. The data is, is just like many of you would have a huge amount of fitness test information for a bunch of athletes I will, um, let me see how far down this goes, I don't remember. So there's 436 rows of data. I think there's about 25 athletes. So each of uh, the athletes has got a bunch of different test results. And I have used what's called a table layout. So table layouts are pretty awesome. I've only just started using them. I'm not sure why I took so long to get on board, but uh, they are fantastic if you can get your head around them. I'm almost there, but uh, not quite, so I still struggle a little bit. And the reason I struggle is when you start to try and do calculations. But anyhow, this uh, data is all standard stuff, speed, strength testing, things such as uh, you'd find in any kind of team sport. And where you see the red line in row two, this is where I've started to do my conversions. And when I click on one of these formulas, you'll see what I mean by uh, how writing formulas can become a little bit complicated. What you see is a whole lot of at symbols and square brackets appear when you use table structures. That is how Excel refers to those numbers, um, and it does take a little bit of getting used to. But these red numbers... I'm not going to go over it again, but these red numbers are the converted scores. So uh, the raw fitness test result has been converted to a number between 0 and 100 using a control panel page that we've got set up here. So each test is either high or low, which means that a low um, score is better or a high score is better. And both have a def defined beginning and end point. So for yo-yo distance, the minimum is 1,000. If you get that for your um, yo-yo distance, you get a score of 0. If you get 3,000 meters, you get a score of 100. And anything in between is a, is a number between 0 and 100, obviously. And the same for all the other tests. So the data table is doing a few lookups to a table of criteria scores and is finding out what's going on. This formula is quite long and that is because it needs to cover both options, i.e. if a test has a low score or a high score as its preferred outcome. But um, I'm not going to go through that formula again because I did that in video number 30. But nevertheless, there's all the data and on the analysis and workings page, what I want to take you through is, is a concept that I used a lot. 
and that is to uh, make a composite variable and in this case I have turned it into a radar chart so what I mean by a composite variable is that if we look at the fitness test results these are the tests that I have decided are going to be a part of my profiling tool I don't think I selected all the tests but there is multiple tests for each fitness quality and now they are sometimes subtly different fitness qualities but generally speaking I have decided to pull them together so for example speed there are one two three four five different speed measures that we have got now what I've decided is that my measure of speed which you see on this radar chart here is made up of 50% speed over 10 meters and 50% top speed or flying 30 and similarly for some of the other measures I've just made up myself using uh, my own decisions and uh, when I was working with athletes which was just two or three years ago now I would work with the coach to develop that I would say what do you want the strength score to be made up from and if you look down here at strength lower I've decided that it's 60 percent back squat 40 percent deadlift 1RM and so you can muck around and make your own indices of strength and the reason to do so is that I always felt frustrated that I could not tell a coach that an athlete was faster I would say well they're faster over 10 meters but not over 30 they're faster through an agility sprint but not through a straight line sprint and so the coach often didn't want to hear that they just wanted to know that this athlete's speed had improved so first thing we had to do was define how we wanted to evaluate whether speed had improved and then we had to be able to just do some composite scoring so to make this work in Excel the sports science lesson is over the Excel lesson is now beginning I made up a little lookup table and so here we are here these are my variables and these gold boxes as I tend to do these gold boxes are drop down boxes so I can choose from a series of dates now those dates come over here so by choosing an athlete let's choose a different one the array formula that we've done in previous videos pulls out any results that match that person's name so those dates there are in this sequence of drop down boxes so I can choose anything I like what I do want to have is the most recent one first because I think that's a good thing to do and then I can choose some reference points so I'm just going to choose that one there and that one there so it doesn't matter what you do once you do that we have an index match lookup so index from a table that I just showed you this is the data that it's looking up because it's wanting those A scores I just prefixed it with an A um, because that is my converted score the one between 0 and 100 whereas the previous data to the left is the raw data um, I put an A just because I say athlete score rather than uh, all the other numbers seem to be taken by mathematicians such as the Z score and so on so that's all the A means and now I'm in a position to say okay I've got my three data series I want to write some formulas to pull the data in which I've done here index and match so uh, finding the right row based upon the date selected and finding the right variable pretty easy index match table lookup um, plenty of tutorials about how to do that better uh, both on my channel and on others now what's interesting about this are these two columns so if I wanted to I could go through each of these variables and pick which fitness quality and I've chosen six 
which fitness quality this particular test belongs to. Now some of them measure the same thing, so I didn't want to do them twice, but let's say I get rid of that one and say that yo-yo distance and MAS make up 100% of my fitness score and they're both equal 50% parts. And so that's what I've just decided here. Drop down box which variable you don't have to assign every test. And what I do see here is uh, I've got a little alert up above. I've got too much. It only can add up to one. I've got too much in the fitness category, so I need to delete that one if, in fact, I don't want it. Or I might decide that this should be 30%, and this is 20%. I actually think repeated sprint should be a part of a aerobic fitness assessment, but that's a story for another day. So there we are. This table at the top is making sure, these set of cells here, is making sure that I haven't gone over one or I'm not below one for anything. I'll show you what happens if I get that wrong. That's just conditional formatting. Pretty simple conditional formatting rule there that you'll be able to uh, have a look at. So there it is there. When cell value is less than one, make it yellow. When cell value is greater than one, make it red. So nothing flash about that. But anyhow, I have gone through this table and decided what I wanted to include. And I've made sure that um, every fitness quality equals up to one. Now what's interesting about this particular um, formula that I'm just coming into now is that I've used some product. Now some product is, uh, if you looked at uh, Excel message boards from five years ago, you'd find that uh, two thirds or three quarters of Excel geeks would say that some product is the best formula that Excel has. Now in recent years, some ifs and count ifs and those uh, more standard formulas have taken a bit of the sting out of some product, but it's incredibly powerful. And I'm just going to demonstrate how it's working um, in this particular formula. So what this is saying, this number of 54.2, what that is saying, uh, it's probably not a good example because it's only one, let's choose fitness, 30.4. So what that is saying is that we need to go through this table and find everything that says fitness. And if you go through this table, you're going to find three items. Now inside the sub product, if I select this and hit F9, it will tell us false, true, true, false, true, and the rest false. And the little double negatives in front of it converts those trues and falses to what computers understand better, which is ones and zeros. And so, so what some product is actually doing is saying for each row in this system, which is either a 0 or a 1, times the score. So in this particular instance, MAS is 50. So let's put that in there. And also, we need to take into the account what factor we've allocated to it, so 0.5. And so it's going through each row and doing 1 times 50 times 0.5 plus whatever else we've put down for fitness. So as soon as you have a zero in the front, everything else becomes irrelevant because that particular formula will evaluate to zero. So this initial part, which is double negative and either true false converted to ones and zeros, means that uh, it only counts something 
that matches the initial criteria, i.e. the component equals fitness. It just goes through those other columns to do a simple equation, multiply uh, one by the other. And so I've gone through all of those formula, set them all up so that if I change a, a test date, everything just automatically updates. And from that point onwards, it's pretty simple. I'm really just doing a straight graph of a six item radar profile. So rather than having um, yo-yo test and MAS and anything else that I want on there, I've got a very, very simple system which does composites. Now, validity would be low if you tried to publish this in a journal, but uh, I was never one to care too much for that. As long as I felt that it was worthwhile and the coach that I was working with liked it, I would run with those concepts and see if they uh, provided me with useful information. And this particular chart is a hell of a lot more uh, simple to look at and make sense of than this particular one. Even more so if you uh, change the weight of the um, particular tests that you don't really um, have the same interest in. Like so. So previous tests can become less of a feature by you know, making the colors a bit less standing out or, or otherwise. But ultimately, I, I very much like the concept of a stripped down profile chart, radar chart, rather than one that is a bit too busy. So what I've demonstrated is really, um, from an Excel perspective, just that sum product formula. But there's a whole bunch of steps that we got to, uh, that we had to go through, sorry, to get to this point, such as setting up the data in a table, doing an index array extraction, which I've done in a previous video also. I'll flash that number up in case you haven't seen it, so you'll find that here. This is an index array that basically pulls out any results for this particular athlete. There's also a very complex equation that calculates those A scores that I call them. Um, but from an Excel perspective, it's just this little lookup table that has a bit of uh, data validation and a few functions inside it to allow us to get that calculation to go into this radar chart. So I'll be back for another video shortly and email me if you would like a copy of this. Thanks.